Hey there, Brian King coming to you. I posted about this earlier on my page and there's a pretty good discussion for it going on that I encourage you to check out. But I received a call not too long ago that the, the schools that my sons attend are currently under lockdown because a threat was made on social media. That's pretty much all that was said. It didn't say specifically what the threat was, uh, that they said the police are, are dealing with it. I hope that means the police are trying to track down whoever made the threat and take them into custody so that they know that the boys are safe and the boys can go back to the class. Uh, my 12 year old began sending me very anxious texts and we kind of joked back and forth for a little bit. Now he's just kind of taking it in stride and, and working on assignments while he's kind of waiting this out. But it really has me thinking, you know, that one of the big questions is, what the hell is this world coming to? You know, the emotional reactions, you know, I, I hope they catch this little bastard, lock him up, all that stuff. But then when I started calming down and thinking more practically, I'm thinking about all of the parents that say to themselves, well, my kid would never do that. I wonder how many parents of the kids that ended up being school shooters ever said, oh, of course my kid, my kid would be the first in line to do this kind of crap. Yeah, my kid's really emotionally disturbed. Yeah, yeah, my kid would do this. No parent ever says that. And if they do think their kid would do that, they hopefully try and get some help about it. I vaguely remember that the kid that did the Sandy Hook shooting, they tried to get him services, but either he was resistant to them or the services were not available. But I got the sense the family made an effort. But clearly some things fell through the cracks. But when it comes to our kiddos, we cannot take for granted, and I, you know, we make a lot of excuses, we're in denial, we minimize things as parents because we want to believe our kids are happy and okay, because if they're not, we're failures as parents. you got to get rid of that conversation in your head, plain and simple, because we have to be able to embrace the reality of where our kids are at. If our kids think it's their job to please us and pretend to be happy, they will hide depression, they will hide anxiety, and they will feel like they can't come to you because they don't want to upset you. So you have to have those conversations around, tell me honestly, how are you feeling? How are you experiencing school? What do you enjoy about it? What things would you like to have be better? And then when they give you this stuff, you hope you don't want, you hope that you don't want to hear, you can say to them, thank you so much for being honest with me. Let's talk about what options we have for how to deal with that. So you skip over feeling bad, feeling guilty, beating yourself up because you're a less than perfect parent, and you go directly into taking action. Because it's the kids that feel helpless to change their circumstances that begin contemplating doing stuff like this. But if your kid sees you as somebody that's going to back them up and take some meaningful action to improve the situation, that sense of helplessness has a harder time taking root. So please start having these conversations more often with your kiddos. Because the more we know what our kids' internal life is like in this incredibly messed up world they're living in now, the better we can support them and help them and get them what they need. So that this idea of even making a threat doesn't even cross their minds. That's just my two cents on this. I strongly encourage you to chime in on this conversation. Has this happened at your kid's school? How are they dealing with it? How are you dealing with it? How are you discussing this topic with your kiddos? I'd love to learn from you. Thank you so much for returning in. Still waiting this out. This is Brian. We'll talk again soon.